Welcome, loves, to another episode of Happy Ho Life. It honestly delights my soul so much to welcome you all into, into these episodes because I see these episodes as an opportunity to deepen into self, an invitation to play with what your own happy whole life looks like what is making your own soul purr right now and I invite you if it feels good to just take a moment of presence with yourself before we drop into this episode a breath a purr a wiggle a shake and whether you're listening to this episode in your car or doing some things around your home or whether you're just laying in bed listening on a walk listening welcome thank you for being here i always feel these podcast episodes as a co-creation even though i'm just sitting here on zoom by myself actually we got molly i'm dog sitting for my friend right now we got molly here with us the michelle and molly podcast but i always think of these podcasts like a co-creation and your presence as the listener on the other end means the world to my projector soul. So thank you for being here. And for today's episode, I want to speak to autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's specifically, and the throat chakra self-expression voice activation connection. This is just, it's so important. It is such an important part of my story and such a big reason why why I'm even here, <laughs> why I'm recording this podcast episode, why I care so much about supporting people in the realms of self-expression and activating their voice and speaking up and being true to themselves and saying whatever it is the fuck you want to say in your real life, on the internet, in your relationships. So for those of you who are maybe newer to my realms of the internet, you might not know that I actually started my business as a nutritionist and then an autoimmune coach helping people heal autoimmune disease. And this came from my own experience of healing from autoimmune disease. I've been in remission from Hashimoto's celiac and dermatitis herpetiformis, which is the skin form of celiac or the skin rash associated with celiac disease that for I think three and a half years now, I've been in remission, maybe even a bit longer. And I don't speak about it enough. If I'm being honest, I sometimes feel that the autoimmune disease and all that healing doesn't have a place somehow in my happy whole life and my expression. And in this moment, I'm really calling myself forward to share these pieces of my story that really fucking matter because so, so many souls out there, whether you experience autoimmune disease or chronic symptoms of some kind or some sort of ongoing illness or chronic illness, right? It's discerning, okay, is there a bigger connection? Are there deeper opportunities for healing that maybe you haven't seen yet? Maybe you haven't connected with yet. And that was the case for me when I first got diagnosed with Hashimoto's back in 2017. I was told by conventional doctors, you know, you know, good luck. We'll give you some medications for your thyroid and your condition will worsen over time and we'll simply increase those medications. And you know, tough luck, tuck, lu tough, <laughs> tuck luck, tough luck. And part of me was just so fucking furious. And I was like, fuck no, fuck no, that is not going to be my path. I don't know what other paths exist, but I sure as hell am going to find them. And I give credit to the fiery part of me at that time, even though I felt really weak, I felt really frail. I felt really terrified because I was only 24 years old. And I thought, okay, this feels like a life sentence. I'm going to be sick for the rest of my life. And what does that mean? And what does that look like? And that courageous part of me decided there's another way, there's another path for me. And a little background, I went down all the usual paths of healing per se. I, you know, focus on the diet. And when I see conventional, you know, oftentimes even with autoimmune disease, if you get diagnosed in the conventional medicine system, Nobody talked to me about diet or or anything or nutrition or, you know, the holistic look at our bodies and the fact that every part of us is interconnected and to look at one single component of our beautiful bodies, our sacred vessel that holds our soul without reverence for all the interconnectedness and all the other parts, just to me, it boggles my mind. 
but I went down all the the paths that one goes down, healing autoimmune disease, seeing the functional medicine doctors, dieting, you know, following all the rigid different diets that are out there for autoimmune disease healing. I took all the supplements, did all the lab work. And while I give so much credit to the pieces of the puzzle that those avenues of healing filled, if you will, it wasn't everything. In fact, my healing hit a plateau where I still was feeling like a shell of the person that I once was. I was still feeling like there's something missing within my soul here. I don't, I don't feel my vitality. I don't feel healthy. I don't feel radiant and I fucking want it. I really, really, really wanted to, to feel the full vitality of my body. I wanted to feel healthy. I wanted to feel alive. And so I continued to explore. And what I found was that for me, a root cause, a root, yeah, root cause really of of why I got sick in the first place was suppressing my expression, denying the truth of my voice and hiding and and locking away parts of myself that I had deemed at some point in my life unworthy of being seen, heard, loved, right? And again, what I want to speak to today in this episode is the connection between my experience with healing Hashimoto's and my journey of becoming self-expressed. Because I would... I would venture to say that I'm one of the most self-expressed people that I know. The way I show up on my social media is the way I show up in my real life, if you will. Like social media is my real life in some ways. And it's one of the reflections that I so often receive when I meet people in person from, you know, that I've met through the online realms and Instagram is like, they're like, wow, Michelle, like you're like exactly, exactly (laughs) who I expected you to be. And that's because I... I'm really ruthlessly true to myself in my self-expression, no matter what platform it is, whether it's a social media app, whether it's real life, whether it's with a friend, whether it's with a stranger, it's you're, you're just getting me. (laughs) I show up as I am. And that is a devotion that I made to myself in my journey of healing autoimmune disease. When I realized, fuck, being untrue to myself, stifling my voice, holding back the things that I had to say, pretending like I didn't know how fucking powerful and capable I was were part of the things that were keeping me sick in the first place. So in order to heal, I needed to ah, let all those walls down. I needed to uncage my voice. Like I imagine... If you don't know, I love birds. I'm a bird lady through and through. I love bird photography. I love talking about birds. <laughs> I think I need to start. I want to start another Instagram just for all my bird photography. But I imagine as if there's like a a songbird that lives within me. And like this beautiful songbird that lives within me. And for most of my life, I had that songbird in a cage. Like, oh, you want to sing? Shut your mouth. Sit down. Go to the back of the cage. Right. And it was instances in my life when I learned that, oh, that part of you is not safe to express. Oh, like you better zip that up. Oh, like that's too much, too shiny, too sensitive, too sexy, too slutty, too whatever. Right. The too much that we've all, so many of us have experienced someone saying that to us, whether it was in a well meaning way, right? Like our parents saying, like, oh, that's like, that's too much like don't share that part of you don't show that side of you because they wanted to protect us and wanted to keep us safe and we're un- unknowingly passing along their own trauma their own protective mechanism that they learned to keep themselves safe and you know even as an example i i'm korean my mom is korean and in korean culture it's very patriarchal and so for my mom and for my homie my grandmother as well it was you know, to be an outspoken, bold, sexy, slutty woman, it wasn't an option for them. They had to say no to themselves. They had to be the zipped up versions of themselves in order to survive in, you know, this country, in the workplace, in a culture that 
doesn't celebrate women's sexuality or sensual expression the way, you know, these ways in which I choose to show up, these ways that feel nourishing and liberating, you know, again, going back to that soul purr, these things that make my soul purr wasn't available to my mom and her family as immigrants. Their focus was on survival and trying to make ends meet. There wasn't the opportunity to be like, you know what, what parts of my soul want to come alive today and how can I express them? And so just also taking a moment to just sink into the gratitude of this life that I get to live where exploring the edges and in the pockets of my own self-expression and multifacetedness have been available to me. It is such a fucking gift. And within healing autoimmune disease, that was a little tangent, but coming back to healing autoimmune disease, it was so magnificent for me to witness the more and more I opened up in my self-expression, the more part of my multifaceted facetedness that I owned, the less and less and less Hashimoto's was a thing in my life, to be honest. The the more and more I owned my voice and owned my fucking pleasure and decided I get to take up space. I get to be the most powerful person in any room I walk into if I want to be. The more I allowed myself to experience the gift of my own voice, the more my symptoms of Hashimoto's just started to dissolve into the background until it kind of felt like the same way autoimmune disease kind of felt like it snuck up on me. And it was just like one day, all of a sudden, I just woke up and I couldn't recognize myself or my life anymore. And it was fucking terrifying. Autoimmune disease exited my life in a really similar way where I was really devoted to myself, to my healing, to my expression. And then slowly day after day, and then one day it was just like, huh, I wake up and I'm not agonizing over symptoms anymore. I wake up and I'm not thinking about, you know, is this symptom still here? Am I still experiencing this? I wasn't worried anymore. I was simply allowing myself to live and be alive and experience life. And I wanted to speak to this because for for so many of us, we have been conditioned away from being the multifaceted mermaid, alien, weirdo, ho, slut, <laughs> witch, whatever it is that lights up your soul, whatever it is that makes you feel like a whole and complete and just deliciously expressed version of yourself. So many of us have been conditioned away from embracing those parts of ourselves because, you know, whether it's, you know, for example, your inner witch, maybe you feel like you have to be shoved into the spiritual closet because to own your spirituality, to own that you enjoy oracle cards or that you love to talk to your ancestors or, you know, again, like coming back to the slut archetype, the hoe archetype, maybe it's a fear that in your culture, like for me with Korean culture, that, oh no, like that is not to be accepted. You can't wear that. You can't show up like that. You can't embrace your sexuality in that way. That's, you know, dishonoring to some part of your family or, or to your lineage. And that's how I felt. But the more and more I oh, embrace those parts of me and I'm just like, ah, oh, giving myself a big hug right now of, of recognition and in love and celebration that, ah, I walked the walk, I walked through the fire and on the other side of the fire is mm, like a cooling oasis, like a beautiful forest where my inner happy ho gets to roam, where she gets to live. But it was through the practice of ruthless self-love that allowed me to get to this place. And when we think of self-expression, when we think of the most liberated self-expression to me, what it comes down to, these foundations of liberated self-expression, of self-approval, self-love, ruthlessly having your own back and choosing yourself over anyone else's opinion and choosing yourself over anyone else's approval. You know, to me, those are the foundations of living a happy whole life. Those are the foundations of liberated self-expression and, and getting to those places of loving yourself, approving of yourself, 
requires you to see yourself and look at yourself and explore the parts of yourself that have maybe gone unseen and unloved and unrecognized for maybe a really long time. And so as an example of, okay, this is great, Michelle. Heal and autoimmune disease is cool, but like tangibly, what did that actually look like? <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about like, how did I crack open this fucking door to healing with my self-expression and my pleasure? And of course, to for some of you, this may be no surprise, but dance and movement was just such a portal for me to access these parts of myself that I had shunned and shamed and run away from. Namely, my inner siren, my inner sensual slut, my inner happy hoe, those parts of me I had shoved down so, so, so far because I learned they weren't safe to express. They weren't welcome. And, you know, part of part of what I think about when I think about what it means to live a, live a happy whole life is this this foundational truth that all of you is welcome here, that all fucking parts of you fit. All parts of you fit. All parts of you are welcome here. And how might you operate in the world if you believed that? If you believed so deeply that everything about you is right, all of your parts, all parts of your multifacetedness facetedness have a place in the world and have a purpose within your human experience within your soul's experience and I remember as I was first healing with autoimmune disease and and navigating all of it sometimes in the dark you know after the sun went down I wouldn't even turn any lights on I was just in our living room, in our home, and I would turn on my favorite Korean rap music, BTS, mic drop, tear, okay, my inner K-pop enthusiast just whooshed out of me, but I would listen to just like mm, music that like helped me access something primal within me, and I remember just like crawling around on the ground like a spider like some creepy crawly creature I remember just like raging on the floor and just like moving my hips and like swirling my hair around doing hair flips and just all of these things that I had never felt safe to do right like really like grinding my hips and just like getting into it and just feeling myself I'd never given myself permission to go to those places I felt shy in my own presence almost not even almost I felt shy in my own presence it felt like ew this is awkward like I can't I can't be this I can't do this I can't look like this because I was so conditioned like you know everything you know if you dance it needs to look sexy and it needs to look pretty and it needs to look you know goddessy or whatever that means right it's like if you're a goddess do do whatever you want look however you want dress however you want dance however you want (laughs) I'm kind of starting to break down these rigid boxes that I had placed myself in of okay you're the good girl you're the nice girl so you've got to dress like that you got to dress like the professional you got to behave like you care so much about everybody else that you're willing to let them stomp all over you right or over here like the good daughter archetype right it's like gotta follow the conventional path of the Korean student I gotta go to med school or I gotta work in this genetics lab and healing autoimmune disease felt like saying yes to myself for every single moment in my life where I'd walked away from myself every single moment I said no to myself every single moment I abandoned myself every single time I swallowed my truth in favor of making sure everyone else got to stay comfortable healing Hashimoto's putting autoimmune disease in remission took me deciding and saying fuck it (laughs) right like no I will not stand for those dynamics anymore I will not stand for the dynamics of playing small I will not stand for that dynamics of holding myself back because I'm scared of what other people are going to think or I'm scared of what my family is going to think it's this recognition and I feel autoimmune disease really supported me in having this like just 
soul slap in the face of this is your life. This is your precious life that you have to live. And who are you going to live it for? Are you going to choose everyone else's approval over your own soul? And my answer was no. I'm going to choose myself over anyone else's opinion. I'm going to choose myself over anyone else's approval. My my family is included, my Korean lineage included. And that choice, that devotion, right? And it wasn't, it was this choice, this moment, but it was also all of these moments strung together of, you know, even for example, going home to visit my parents in Maryland, it was, am I going to hold my boundaries or am I going to shrink into the person that I once was when I lived in this, my childhood home? right? It was in the moment with, I mean, even just thinking about the experience of being harassed at a coffee shop recently, it was that moment of in the past, I would have just like handed my number out to anyone and been like, oh, sure. Yes. But instead it's like, yeah, fuck no. Holding my boundaries, honoring my own space, saying no, asking people to leave me alone. Right. And just like for every single moment in the past, when I didn't speak up when I didn't say what I needed to say it's devoting deciding choosing from now on I am going to say what I need to say also I have an alarm going off hold on we are back reminder perfection is not required show up let it be messy let it be imperfect but dropping back in What I really want to say in this episode is whether you're healing an autoimmune disease, whether you also have Hashimoto's, because honestly, I was so, 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 so surprised. And yet at the same time, not surprised at all. I recently led a group program and it was called Seven Days of Being Seen. And I remember finding out on one of our calls that so many of the beautiful souls that had joined that program who were craving, who were desiring to be seen and to be more self-expressed, in fact, had a Hashimoto's diagnosis. And I thought, wow, okay, wow, wow, wow. This medicine is needed, right? The medicine of self-expression, the medicine of receiving the gift of your own voice just for the sake of receiving your own voice all right and so it's my invitation to you today whenever you have a moment of spaciousness to tune in and ask yourself the question what does it look like to see myself what does it look like to ruthlessly own who I am and it might be one baby step It might be setting a boundary with a family member who watches your stories on Instagram and sometimes likes to leave comments about how they don't approve of what you're saying or how maybe you should think twice about what you're posting. Maybe it looks like blocking your family on social media like I did to create a safe space for yourself to use your voice and show up. Maybe it looks like starting to unleash uncage a texture of your self-expression that's been wanting to come alive right is there a part of your soul that is wanting to be seen a part of your heart that just wants to be expressed and what would it look like to take one single step even if it's micro baby step towards letting that part of you be seen and for example maybe it's like me my dancing in the dark, right? My like wild, primal, you know, quote unquote, ugly dancing in the dark, right? Of course, I think it's beautiful. I think that dancing is beautiful, but you know, it's not this conventionally like, oh yeah, I look sexy and I look goddessy. It was just me like rolling around on the floor. But for me, that was a practice of seeing myself, And so I invite you to explore what might it look to start to see yourself more, start to embrace those parts of your self-expression that want to be out there in the world. And I'm actually hosting a flash sale on my program, Naughty Content Challenge right now. And what's dropping through is even speaking to this concept of naughty content or or naughty expression because (laughs) I'll say that I remember when I was first launching this program back in 
maybe it was September of last year, I think something. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere around there in the fall. I remember there were some people that were like naughty content. Like, does that mean like slutty content? Like, do I need to dance in lingerie? Like, what does naughty mean? And I invite you to, you know, take this or leave this. But when I think about naughty expression, I think of it as breaking the rules or rather setting the fucking rules on fire about who you're allowed to be, how you're allowed to show up, what you're allowed to say, even that word like allowed. It's like allowed by who? Who told you that it wasn't safe to be sexy or witchy or sensitive or who told you you were too much because you had big emotions and you cried a lot? Why is that a problem? Right? And and to me, the medicine of naughty content or just the medicine of naughty expression, quote unquote, is this energy of any label, any box that you've ever been shoved into, any place you've ever feel like you've had to say no to yourself or deny your expression or hold back your hold back your voice, bite your tongue, all these things. It's what does it look like to say, you know what? No. Similarly to it was that like inner naughty expression that came forward when I was like, to my doctor who was like, good luck with this Hashimoto's thing. You're just going to suffer for the rest of your life. It was my inner, it feels like it was like some inner magical naughty gremlin that was just like, ah, like, no, we're not doing that. It was this part of me that was like, we don't play by anyone else's rules. I'm done agreeing to be a palatable version of myself to make sure no one else has to feel uncomfortable. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No more. No more. No more. <laughs> So I invite you to play with this concept for yourself. If you were to be a little naughty, if you were to discern what rules you might be playing by in your self-expression right now, what if any rules exist? What are you allowed to post? How are you allowed to post? What rules do you have around your own expression? And a different way of asking this question or a different way to uncover some of these rules may even be to simply peruse your content graveyard, aka the notes section of your phone. Raise your hand if you are like me and you sometimes hoard half-written posts that you've deemed unfinished, not good enough, not complete, don't know what graphic to pair with it, so fuck it. I'll just let it die in the notes on my phone, right? And you might even just kind of peruse, if you will, the note section of your phone today, looking at how thriving this content graveyard on your phone might be and simply asking the question, do I want to let my magic die here? Do I want to let these words go unspoken? Do I want to let my inner siren song go unsung? And I will say, Sometimes we just want to write stuff for ourselves and not everything is meant to be shared. And very often I've supported many, 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 many people in the realms of self-expression. And I found a very common theme is so often we hold back because of whether it's perfectionism or people pleasing or feeling like we just have to get it right. It's if everything about you is right, Then those half written, unfinished, you know, quote unquote, unfinished posts, they're also right too. And they deserve to be seen. Your magic deserves to be seen. And so my, if you will, like naughty content challenge, ground zero for today, (laughs) whether you feel a soul pull to join us for naughty content or not, naughty content challenge zero for today is to sift through the notes on your phone and make it playful let it be playful let it be fun maybe turn on a song and have a little dance party and you might also treat it like oracle cards where you just kind of tune into your intuition do a little scroll through the note section of your phone and then go and just press down onto your phone and whatever half written note you happen to land on post it share it whether you're like, fuck, I can't share it to my feed because it's not perfect. Share it to your stories then. Again, micro actions are much better than no actions. 
right? Micro actions in congruence with the life that you want for yourself, micro actions in congruence with your liberated self-expression and allow yourself to collect evidence that you shared a half finished, you know, not perfect post and you didn't die. In fact, maybe it's even a little bit fun. Maybe it's even a little bit exciting. And so that is my invitation for you from this episode is to see a part of yourself, share that part of yourself. Ah. I'm tuning in if there's any last threads. I'm sure there will be more future episodes around autoimmune healing. But for today, as I said, Naughty Content Challenge is on soul per flash sale right now. And what I mean by soul per is it's making my soul per to reopen this program and and share this flash sale for anyone who's craving to unleash your most outrageously you expression and have fuck tons of fun on social media. That's where we're going. Inside Naughty Content Challenge, the link will be in the show notes and you can feel free to dm me on instagram as well if you are curious to learn more but as always if you had any takeaways from this episode if there was anything that activated some part of your soul as always i love 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 to hear from you it makes my entire being per to receive your dms or emails or you know story screenshot shares of your takeaways or pieces of this episode that offered a nutrient to your soul in some way. So feel free as always to reach out on either of my current Instagrams. I'm in the process of navigating what Instagram I want to lead with, but everything will be linked in the show notes below. And thank you for being here. I'm sending you all the love. Ah, Take good care. (laughs) 